Battery-powered electric vehicles appear to be the most sustainable carbon-free solution for the years to come. But what are the real impacts of driving and operating electric trucks? We've looked into the matter to shed some scientific light on this question. There are two types of impacts. Direct impacts for the purchasers and users of electric trucks, such as the cost, which depends on both the purchase price of the vehicle and its cost of use, including electricity consumption and maintenance, even though we know that it is low, the need to change certain practices or approaches, which involves training drivers, adapting their rounds and itineraries, and installing charging facilities. To respond to and to cover these direct impacts, some electric truck manufacturers have set up a structure to support their customers and facilitate their company's energy shift. This is the case of Renault Trucks, and we will soon be giving you more information about this. Beyond direct impacts, the indirect impacts, which we call externalities because they affect users and society without being valued in the selling price of the truck. These include the disappearance of polluting emissions or their drastic reduction, the boost in image for companies using these trucks, and comfort of use for drivers, but also the issue of the environmental footprint of the batteries. Let's look at each of these indirect impacts in detail. First, emissions. There are three types of emissions, CO2, which has an effect on global warming, NOx, which are local pollutants, and noise. For CO2, the quantity of emissions is calculated from cradle to grave. In other words, it takes into account all of the CO2 emitted from the production of the truck and the energy that powers it until the end of its life. For a 16-ton vehicle used in urban areas in Europe, electric power can currently reduce CO2 emissions by two in average, close to 50% in Germany and 80% in France, for instance. This reduction should be around 85% in average in 2040. NOx, or nitrogen oxides, play a major role in air pollution. At high concentrations, these are threats for public health due to their effect on respiratory systems. Concentration is higher locally along roads with high traffic density. As they have no local emissions, battery electric trucks solve this public health issue. Electric trucks also provide an effective solution to noise pollution. This is particularly welcome in urban areas. For example, the Renault Truck D electric emits 85% less external noise in the legal pass-by test than the diesel version. This drastic reduction in noise is an opportunity for cities to experiment with nighttime deliveries in order to ease daytime traffic. Let's listen to the testimonies of Clément Delaveau, Operations Manager at the Nicolin Group, and Cédric Laventure, Driver at Jackie Perreno. Ce camion nous permet plusieurs choses, de n'avoir aucune nuisance sonore et de n'avoir surtout aucune nuisance polluante, car ce marché est entouré de commerces et notamment de terrasses. Il n'y a pas du tout de bruit. D'ailleurs, il y a un bon retour des riverains qui apprécient de pouvoir être livrés sans, sans être importunés par le bruit du moteur. Did you know that the electric trucks can be so quiet that pedestrians or cyclists may fail to hear them? So to share the road safely, manufacturers are fitting electric trucks with noise makers to give a continuous warning of their presence and a louder warning of maneuvers such as reversing. And what about the drivers? We mentioned there were positive impacts for them too, as driving an electric truck is a totally different experience. There are many advantages for the users. For example, noise levels inside the cab are significantly reduced from 99% at a standstill to 40% at 50 km per hour. However, at 90 km, admittedly, the interior noise is similar to a diesel because the truck's aerodynamic noise takes over from the engine noise. The lower noise and vibration levels make driving less tiring for users. Electric trucks are also more powerful, which makes it easier for them to join moving traffic. All of these details play a role in improving the quality of life at work for drivers. The way the public look at the truck changes and drivers are really proud to be behind the wheel of a vehicle that is well accepted. Not to mention what all this represents in terms of image and attractiveness for transport companies. Let's listen again to Clément Delaveau and Cédric Laventure. C'est un vrai plus pour nous d'avoir ce camion en termes d'image de marque. Ça valorise énormément nos équipes, ça donne un nouveau sens au métier et ça apporte une vraie valeur ajoutée aussi à nos collaborateurs. Je peux effectuer une tournée tranquillement sans craindre de tomber en panne de batterie. J'ai en plus la fierté de pouvoir conduire propre. La conduite est beaucoup plus souple, c'est beaucoup plus agréable que de conduire un diesel. C'est un véritable confort pour les conducteurs, moins de fatigue, et puis on n'a pas le, le, les contraintes d'odeur et de passage de vitesse. Quoi. 
euh, je le recommande. Il hein. n'y euh, a que du positif au niveau écologique, au niveau confort de conduite, euh, au niveau fiabilité. Ça nous permet nous, nous aussi de nous épanouir dans notre travail. As we've just seen, electric trucks have positive impacts on carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and noise emissions. They also significantly improve drivers' working conditions. European governments have set up purchase subventions to encourage truck users to switch to electric vehicles. These subventions vary from country to country, but on average they cover 20 to 40% of the extra cost of an electric vehicle. To reduce pollution and encourage the use of low-carbon energy, some European cities are gradually banning old trucks from city centers. Some 250 low-emission zones are being set up, mainly in the Netherlands, Italy and Germany, and this number is set to increase over the coming years. To complete our assessment of the environmental footprint of electric vehicles, we must of course talk about the batteries. Are we not simply shifting the problem and creating other environmental concerns? An electric truck lithium-ion NMC battery is made up of mineral. Electrification of vehicles is set to increase the need for these minerals. A 2021 International Energy Agency report concluded that there are enough reserves on Earth today. The area of concern is the mining industry and how it invests to be able to supply the electromobility boom in cars and trucks at a sufficient pace. Manufacturers will be paying close attention to how the various minerals are mined and processed. For example, the Volvo Group has voluntarily included a responsible sourcing of raw materials clause in its supplier code of conduct. Labels and traceability are key to securing the right environmental, such as soil protection, biodiversity, water and waste management, and societal, like health, safety, labor rights, human rights, conditions along the battery production chain. Finally, as regards battery production, the 2021 study conducted by the NGO Transport and Environment concludes that Europe, with the construction of new gigafactories, is already self-sufficient. Another issue is the medium-term recycling of batteries. Let's shed some light on this with Nicolas Gendre, Head of Battery Industrialization and Logistics at Volvo Energy. After their use in a vehicle around eight years, batteries need to be replaced. Those used batteries can firstly be remanufactured. By exchanging old modules, you can get back uh, as good as new battery for exchange. The used batteries or used modules still have a significant capacity and can then be given a second life in a stationary application, for instance, for another eight, ten years. It is only when the batteries is not suitable for any kind of application that they are sent to recycling with the ambition to re-inject back material and recycled material into the production system. Europe is actually preparing for a new regulation in which OEMs will be responsible for tracing, collecting, recycling up to 70% of the battery weight by 2030 and ultimately reusing recycled material into battery production. By that, we are aiming at a full circular business, lowering the need for critical raw material in the near future. And what are the real facts when it comes to charging? It's very easy to charge the depot at night to keep the fleet fully operational, but it's also possible to charge quickly for unexpected runs. And to cover all aspects of this subject, isn't there a risk of electricity shortages if we want to meet all these needs in a few years' time? Marc Lejeune answers. Uh, all European countries are preparing plans to increase their electricity production while decarbonating it fully before 2050. And this goes uh, mainly with wind and uh, sun electricity which are intermittent energy, and it will require us from the grid operators to invest in storage capacities, either chemicals with batteries or hydrogen, or uh, using the, the, the gravitational energy of the water pumped uh, up in dams, or uh, using the mechanical energy of flywheels. If we take the example of France, the uh, national grid company, uh, RTE, estimates that the, uh, between now and 2050, so in the next 30 years, we will need to increase the electricity production between 0.5 and 1.5% per year, depending on the scenario, and the average scenario is around 1% per year. Uh, looking at their analysis, it seems perfectly feasible, even with a decreasing share of the nuclear electricity. To sum up this overview of indirect impacts, 
battery electric trucks are considered to be the best solution for decarbonating trucks used in urban areas. Their positive environmental footprint brings new opportunities such as access to public funding and access to future low zero emission zones. They improve work conditions for drivers as well as company image and job appeal. Europe is already self-sufficient in its production of batteries, although it's still a need to import the majority of the required minerals. There are enough reserves on Earth for the e-mobility market to thrive. Truck manufacturers are paying special attention to mineral extraction conditions and take full responsibility for battery recycling. Connection to the grid and the production of additional electricity should not be a major hurdle for e-mobility to take off, although there still remains work to do in this area. So, I think we've now covered all the indirect impacts of electric vehicles. They confirm that electricity provides a robust solution to immediately help decarbonize trucks.